Oh, it's another day here at the Comeback Team Studios. And this is your host, Beck Lover, and you're watching another episode of the Interesting Times Podcast right here on the Beck Lover Podcast, where I gather all the stories, all the news, all the rumors of what's happening in this world that we live in. And sometimes reality is much stranger than any fiction novel. There's so much that's been happening in the last couple of days, so I'm going to jump right into it. But you make sure you hit that subscribe button. Check me out on YouTube, Spotify, Rumble, or anywhere podcasts are listened to. But remember, you can also watch these episodes on the websites I listed. With that said, here we go. Interesting times. Interesting times indeed, my friends. Eric Adams creates the first for a New York City mayor. He is the first mayor to be indicted on corruption. I had the pleasure of bumping into Eric Adams at Nebula Nightclub in New York City. And I was very angry, actually, because I'm sitting here knowing how horrible my city's doing. And this asshole has the time to party and go from club to club to the Hamptons all summer while crime is through the roof, migrants, $5 billion were spent housing illegal aliens which have committed many violent crimes in New York City, even shot at police. You guys know the news. But I don't think it's just because of his policies that he's being indicted, even though he's being alleged of doing all types of different corruption. I think it's a little more devious than that. I think Mr. Adams may have been to a freak-off with the same diddler, that's Diddy, that he gave the key to the city of New York to. If you remember in this video here, um, Adams gave Diddy the key to New York City. In a recent turn, Sean Diddy Combs sent back the key to New York City following a request from Mayor Adams earlier this year. I wonder, with his party and habits, did... Eric Adams do things that were un inappropriate that the feds have on record? Did Diddy tape them together when they hung out? I don't know. These are all just speculation at this point. But Eric Adams becomes the former NYPD captain, becomes the first mayor indicted in office after being ensnared in a federal corruption investigation. New York City Mayor Adams painted himself as a victim of persecution after being indicted on federal charges last night, saying he was singled out by the Biden administration for his stance on the migrant crisis. I will agree. When he was welcoming in the migrants and we're a sanctuary city and then he realized the economic toll and the impact it had on New York City and that they've even considered putting a toll within Manhattan itself to punish New Yorkers from crossing from one avenue to the next. Can you imagine that? Because the stench of corruption of allowing millions and millions of people who have not applied legally to be in this country, who did not win green cards or even a work visa being housed in the hotels in New York City, and you're wondering why the room rates are seven, eight hundred, fifteen hundred dollars a night last week, because they are housing and paying for these people. Many of our ancestors came to America with nothing. They paid their dues. They slept on benches. I know people whose grandparents were in the streets, just like these migrants are, and they had to rise above, or they stayed in a shelter, or whatever the case was, family. Since when did this become a part of the American dream, paying $500 a night for someone to stay in a hotel and see if they're going to make it or not? None of it makes sense. And for those of you, I understand the human toll, but it is not sustainable and it is affecting the quality of life in New York City. I swear to God, I was out last week and I'm in front of a fine dining restaurant. I was in front of Philippe's by Chow and a man sat there and peed not even 20 feet away from where we were eating dinner. Okay? Clearly a migrant. Okay? New Yorkers, when we got to pee, we go between cars. It's late at night. No one can see us. We pee in between cars. We're not peeing right in front of people while they're eating. And this wasn't a homeless person. This was literally a migrant. I witnessed it with my own eyes. I wanted to sidekick him into the fucking garbage, to be honest with you, but I was with my girl. I wanted to sidekick him in his fucking head, actually, because it's disgusting. I don't care if you're a migrant, not a migrant. What kind of fucking animal are you peeing 20 feet away from a restaurant at 630 at night? Okay, that's where our city's gone to under the leadership of Bill de Blasio. Let's not forget his ass. And we haven't forgot the billions of dollars that seem to have gone missing. But it looks like the minute Eric Adams went against the agenda, the destabilization, in my opinion, of open borders, 
and flooding New York and these sanctuary cities with people who are illegally here. And God knows what else they have planned for them to maybe influence certain selections that are made during the November season every four years. There's so much going on. I don't understand how people can't see it and wake up. I definitely think they got something on Adams from Diddy. Diddy Steen is what I call him. Diddy's lawyer suggests the rapper stockpiled baby oil because there's a Costco right down the street. Sean Diddy Combs, reported by Yahoo News, his attorney Mark Agnefilo, Agnefilio told a reporter that a rapper stockpiled baby oil in his home simply because he likes to shop in bulk. I mean, there's a Costco right down the street. I think Americans buy in bulk, as we know. Thousands of bottles of baby oil? I don't know about that. And this is consensual adults doing what consensual adults do. See, that part I can agree with. They need to come with hard proof facts and evidence that these people were forced to do it. I do believe that everyone should be presumed innocent. Excuse me. I'm having a little lunch backlash there. People are innocent until proven guilty in this country, even in the case of Puffy. I know he's probably not a great person. He screwed over a lot of his artists, from what I can tell, the whole beef with the locks and Jadakiss and, and, and so on and so forth. That still doesn't mean he did something illegal until they can produce hard evidence showing that he did the things they accuse him of. And I want to remind people of that because we need to be fair because it might be you one day that's accused of something and maybe you didn't do it. We need to be fair at all times. Now, is he, do I think he's a scumbag? Yeah, absolutely. Deadly sins have deadly repercussions in this life or the next. 50 Cent, who's probably having a field day with all of this, 50 Cent on Variety.com says that 50 Cent sets Diddy Abuse Allegations docuseries at Netflix. It's a complex narrative spanning decades. Netflix is producing a docuseries from Curtis 50 Cent Jackson about charges of trafficking and racketeering as well as assault and physical abuse allegations against Sean Diddy Combs. This is a story with a significant human impact. It is a complex narrative spanning decades, not just the headlines or clips so far. 50 Cent and Stapleton said in an exclusive statement to Variety. We remain steadfast in our commitment to give a voice to the voiceless and to present authentic and nuanced perspectives. While the allegations are disturbing, we urge all to remember that Sean Combs' story is not the full story of hip-hop and its culture. We aim to ensure that individual actions do not overshadow the culture's broader contributions. 50 Cent executive produces through his G-Unit film and television banner, while Stapleton executive produces for House of non Nonfiction, with Texas Crew Productions also producing. The bottom line here is 50 Cent. You won, bro. You won with your feud. It's game over for him. Even if he comes out not guilty, my man is done. Done. Eric Adams, did you do a lot more than people know? Does Diddy got the dirt on you? Is that what they have to topple you? Is this story much bigger than Eric Adams? Is this Diddy Steen? Could this be Diddy Steen? Is that why Eric Adams is going down? Did he party a little bit too much? Was he at a freak-off event that's on video and filmed? We know he loves to party. We know he partied all over New York City. We know he was up in the Hamptons. This is a fact. The guy loves to party. I hope they don't have him on video doing things and saying things he shouldn't have. This is Diddy Steen. Diddy Steen. And let's hear a little bit from Mayor Adams. My fellow New Yorkers, it is now my belief that the federal government intends to charge me with crimes. If so, these charges will be entirely false based on lies. But they would not be surprising. I always knew that if I stood my ground for all of you, that I would be a target. And a target I became. For months, leaks and rumors have been aimed at me in an attempt to undermine my credibility and paint me as guilty. Just this past week, they searched the home of our new police commissioner, looking for documents from 20 years ago, just one week after he joined my administration. Enough. I will fight these injustices with every ounce of my strength and my spirit. If I'm charged, I know I am innocent. I will request an immediate trial so the New Yorkers can hear the truth. New Yorkers know my story. They know where I come from. 
I have been fighting injustice my entire life. That fight has continued as your mayor. Despite our pleas, when the federal government did nothing as its broken immigration policies overloaded our shelter system with no relief, I put the people of New York before party and politics. He's basically calling them out. I do believe that he was targeted for finally standing up against the migrants. I will give the mayor that. I said this on previous podcasts before. I bet you, if you guys go listen to my old episodes of Interesting Times, that's why you should stay tuned right here. I told you, the minute he starts speaking against the migrant crisis and the open borders and the impact that it's having on New York, his days are numbered and his days have become numbered. The question is, how are they gonna get him to step down? Or is he gonna face jail time? Or are they gonna throw the book at him? But this is an example of his own party betraying him and throwing him under the bus. And that is true. Democrat eating Democrat. Imagine. And that, this is like no new thing. It seems like every time with the mayor, same thing happened with de Blasio, Cuomo, the governor. I would never want to run as a Democrat. They throw each other under the bus all the time. You're watching it right now in real time. So... Let's see what happens. This is going to be very interesting. What else is interesting is Tampa Bay could be seeing record level water levels, storm surge from Hurricane Helene. I just came back from Tampa a couple weeks ago. I was down there on the Danny Jones podcast. Please check out that episode. I was on Matt Cox. We have half a million views just on that one. And I also met with Matt Bell, CEO of Bell Department Stores, and we were on his Limitless podcast, which I don't know if he's going to air the episode. We'll see. Um, it was that fiery. But praying for the people of Tampa, stay safe down there. Your life is not worth it. If you can get out of that area, get the hell out of there. Ukraine, Russia. Putin issues fresh nuclear threats as Moscow targets Kiev with a five-hour drone assault. Vladimir Putin, this is reported by The Independent. Vladimir Putin has lowered the threshold for Russia to respond with a nuclear attack amid ongoing discussions in Washington over Ukraine's use of Western-provided long-range weapons. The Russian president has said any conventional attack on Moscow that is supported by a nuclear power will be considered a joint attack on his country. He claimed that Russia would consider using nuclear weapons if Moscow received reliable information about the start of a massive launch of missiles, aircraft, or drones against it. Let me break that down for you. If Ukraine uses American or NATO created missiles to strike into Russia, they will consider an act of war. We have never been closer to World War III and nuclear war since the Russian missile crisis in Cuba. This is not a joke, folks. Okay? We have been supporting Ukraine with billions of dollars. They've let that go down. They're saying if one of those missiles that America has the capability, the same ones that Zelensky is sitting over here signing, okay? One of those missiles gets fired into any of Russia's territory, they will consider an act of war even up to the point of using nuclear weapons. This is not a joke anymore. This is not a game anymore. This is us allowing politicians to put us into harm's way, the whole world into harm's way. Every country has its buffer zone. Every country that's a superpower has its territory that it doesn't want other people meddling with. And we are playing a very dangerous game of cat and mouse with a superpower, a nuclear superpower. And I am praying that somehow in the next few months, that conflict comes to an end along with what's going on in the Middle East right now. We have two different conflicts that could both lead to a global war and destabilization, an economic crash, and a breakdown of a global economy. And because we're all interdependable upon each other, can you imagine the crisis that this could bring to all of our lives, regardless of where you live in the world? It is not a joke. But who cares? Reuters reports the U.S. prepares another $8 billion in arms aid packages for Zelensky. So imagine $8 billion, a couple thousand of those dollars, one missile goes over and we got an all-out war with superpowers. Okay, it's not a joke. And meanwhile, we have all this corruption. We have mayors of the biggest city going down for corruption. The streets are not paved. The average American can't handle the bills that they're racking up. The amount of taxes, and we get nothing for it. 
The United States plans to announce more than $8 billion worth of military assistance for Ukraine on Thursday during Ukrainian President Zelensky's visit to Washington. Our children can't afford college. They don't have good jobs waiting for them. This money is used for destruction and chaos around the world instead of constructing a better life for America, for me and you, black, white, gay, straight, Muslim, Christian, Jew, Hindu, Buddhist. It's time that we tell our government we've had enough of these fucking wars. We've had enough. Use the money for something good for once. To make someone's life better here in America. Our veterans, our students need help. Our single parent families need help. It's disgusting. We could all have free health care. With the type of money they've spent in the last 25 years on destruction. Breaking. We will use nuclear weapons if a mass enemy missile or UAV is launched towards Russia. Okay, this is reported by scenario RT. And how things will change is if that non-nuclear power that is attacking Russia is aided, supplied, abetted by a nuclear power, then that nuclear power will be considered uh, a party to this conflict. So this is this is like it's not a joke, guys and girls. U.S. and allies call for an immediate 21-day ceasefire between Israel and Hezbollah. Reported by the Associated Press, the U.S., France, and other allies jointly called Wednesday for an immediate 21-day ceasefire to allow for negotiations in the escalating conflict between Israel and Hezbollah that has killed more than 600 people in Lebanon in recent days. We call for an immediate 21-day ceasefire across the Lebanon-Israel border to provide space for diplomacy. We call on all parties, including the governments of Israel and Lebanon, to endorse the temporary ceasefire immediately. The U.S. hopes the new deal could lead to longer-term stability along the border or maybe just until Israel finishes with Gaza so then they can buy some time and then invade Lebanon, which is what I'm going to predict right here, right now. Iraqi resistance drone attack hits Israel's Eliot port. Iraq's Islamic resistance has launched a drone strike on Israeli-occupied port of Umm al-Rasrasa, Eliot as it's known. In response to Israeli atrocities in Lebanon and Gaza, the umbrella group of various Iraqi factions announced it targeted a vital installation. It emphasized the continuation of operations aimed at dismantling enemy strongholds at an increasing pace. Footage shows the aftermath of the Iraqi resistance drone attack. <laughs> These wars are just going to expand, my folks. I'm telling you, unless something changes, we're in trouble. Top staff in North Carolina, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson's office are stepping down. Top staff in North Carolina's government are stepping down next week. Multiple outlets reported on Wednesday increasing the number of aides parting ways with the state's GOP gubernatorial candidate following CNN's explosive report published last week. Robinson's office chief of staff, Brian Levici, policy director, Jonathan Harris, director of communications, John Wesley Wow, and director of government affairs, Nathan Lewis, will resign on October 1st. This is reported by TheHill.com. The development comes as a flurry of Robinson's campaign staff have stepped down from their roles over the weekend following CNN's bombshell report where the outlet detailed a number of inflammatory comments that Robinson reportedly made on a porn site's messaging board over a decade ago, including calling himself a black Nazi. He has denied writing the post. It's just a reminder to all of you young people, if you're watching me, be careful what you post, the videos you put out. Try to think years ahead how it could impact your life and how it can come back to haunt you. Be careful what you send in text messages and emails. What could be a joke can be construed as something that can throw you into jail now. I mean, we really live in a very dangerous time. You got to be careful with what you post. And if you need more coaching, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out my Instagram. Make sure you check out my Twitter. I'm here for you. B-E-K Lover NYC. That's Beck Lover NYC, New York City, on Instagram and Twitter. 
Missouri executes a man for the 1998 killing of a woman despite her family's calls to spare his life. A Missouri man convicted of breaking into a woman's home and repeatedly stabbing her was executed Tuesday over the objections of the victim's family and prosecutor who wanted the death sentence commuted to life in prison. Marcellus Williams, 55, was convicted in the 1998 killing of Leisha Gale, who was stabbed during the burglary of her suburban St. Louis home. Williams was put to death despite questions his attorneys raised over jury selection at his trial and the handling of evidence in the case. His clemency petition focused heavily on how Gail's relatives wanted William's sentence commuted to life without the possibility of parole. The family defines closure as Marcellus being allowed to live, the petition stated. Marcellus' execution is not necessary. As Williams laid awaiting execution, his, he appeared to converse with a spiritual advisor seated next to him. Williams wiggled his feet underneath a white sheet that was pulled up to his neck and moved his head slightly while his spiritual advisor continued to talk. Then Williams' chest heaved about a half a dozen times and he showed no further movement. <clears throat> I think this is also the same person that Buster Rhymes was trying to help save his life. And he claims, Buster Rhymes had claimed that this guy was innocent. So, um... If he was innocent, this is absolutely horrible. Um, if the family wanted him to have the sentence to life in prison, I think the state should have listened here. And what if this guy really was innocent? It's absolutely crazy. U.S. Secret Service agent probed over sexual misconduct involving Harris Staffer. Seems like the Secret Service can't get anything right these days. Literally. Maybe they're too busy trying to fuck around. The Secret Service is investigating one of its agents after an incident involving someone in Democratic Vice President Kamala Harris's office. Her office said in a statement on Wednesday, the U.S. Secret Service spokesperson said separately that the employee was placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation into a misconduct allegation involving an employee. <clears throat> Maybe Harris's office has zero tolerance for sexual misconduct. Were alerted by the Secret Service about an incident involving an agent and informed that the United States Secret Service initiated an investigation. It read... A Secret Service agent allegedly forced himself onto a Harris staffer in a hotel room in Wisconsin this week. No wonder fucking Trump is getting shot at left and right. These guys can't even keep their pants on. Okay? Secret Service. Maybe if you paid attention more to protecting the presidents and these high-level politicians, we wouldn't have all these assassination attempts if you didn't hire people too busy worrying about getting laid instead of protecting the people they're hired to protect. Again, it's all alleged, but maybe this is why they're so distracted. Maybe they're sexually frustrated. I don't know. Fluoride in drinking water poses enough risk to merit new EPA action, judge says, on behalf of all of us tinfoil hat wearing people that have been telling you for decades that fluoride is dangerous. It's in our toothpaste. It's in our drinking water. You thought we were crazy. People like Alex Jones told you. Well, here it is. Finally, a federal judge has ordered the U.S. and Environmental Protection Agency to further regulate fluoride in drinking water because of high levels that it could pose a risk to intellectual development of children. Thank God I have not drank tap water since I was a child. I only bought filtered water with high alkaline because I knew something was wrong with this. And here's the proof. U.S. District Judge Edward Chen cautioned that it's not certain that the amount of fluoride typically added to water is causing lower IQ in kids, but he concluded that the mounting research points to an unreasonable risk that it could be. He ordered the EPA to take steps to lower that risk, but didn't say what those measures should be. It's the first time a federal judge has made a determination about the neural developmental risk to children of the recommended U.S. water fluoride level, said Ashley Maline, a University of Florida researcher who has studied the effect of higher fluoride levels in pregnant women. She called it the most historic ruling in the U.S. fluoridation debate that we've ever seen. And I really wonder if a lot of these children that have autism in these things, where their mother's drinking fluoridated water were they is a question we should all be asking ourselves but all of you should really be drinking this is a victory i guess for filtered water and bottled water across the world but we should also now demand the fluoride uh in bought water also to make sure you guys thought we were crazy we're not you're just fucking stupid that's all we're not crazy you're fucking dumb you trust everything you've been lied to and lied to over and over again by agencies, by people, by corporations, and you trust them more than your fellow citizen who's trying to help you, your fellow citizen who's trying to protect you. So instead of listening to these people, you attack us, and you get hurt, 
just like we told you not to do this, you guys get hurt. And then you still look at us like we're stupid. No, you guys are fucking morons. Maybe you drink too much fluorided water. Now, cheese, it's been around for a minute. And we're going to talk about some old cheese here. Stinky ass old cheese. DNA from 3,600-year-old cheese sequenced by scientists. CNN reports, Bronze Age desert dwellers unearthed from graves in what now the northwest China were buried with cheese scattered on their heads and necks, perhaps as a snack pack for the afterlife. A decade after the dairy discovery, on strikingly intact remains mummified by the Taklamalakan desert's arid conditions. Scientists have extracted and sequenced DNA from the 3,600-year-old cheese, the oldest in the archaeological record. Now, I know aging cheese makes it better. I wonder if they actually tried a little piece for themselves. The analysis revealed how the Jahihui... I'm trying my best here. You try pronouncing this fucking word. You ready? X-I-A-O-H-E. Chaho. Chaho, people. Made cheese. We're not talking Doritos here. Showing the way humans harness microbes to improve their food and how microbes can be used to track cultural influences through the ages. I think this is astonishing. Fermented foods today are overwhelmingly produced using only a handful of mostly lab-grown commercial strains of bacteria and yeast. Little is known about the once diverse range of heirloom microbes that people used in the past to produce today's most iconic foods, ranging from bread to cheese and from beer to wine. A team led by the Chinese paleogenicist, geneticist, Chao Mi Fu, identified goat and cattle DNA in the samples of the cheese. The researchers were able to also sequence DNA of microbes contained in the cheese, confirming it was kefir, a type of cheese that's still widely made and eaten today. Fu is the director of Ancient DNA Laboratory at the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology in Beijing. And here's a picture of those cheese samples. My question is, why were they throwing cheese on their heads? You know, I'm fucking dead. What do I need cheese for? And that's about it, my friends. Just keep in mind, I do consult and... Uh, if you need any business needs or services, I have ways to generate millions of dollars for your business without taking out loans, without applying for loans. A lot of this money is sitting right in your business and you don't even know you got it and you're not borrowing it. I can actually pay you to do business. If you take credit cards or if you have a couple hundred employees that you pay their benefits, I have ways to consult and save you stupid ass money. Hit me up in the comments or shoot me a message. In any event, this is your boy. Beck Lover, and you're watching another episode of the Interesting Times Podcast on the Beck Lover Podcast. Beck Lover.